Welcome back. Let's now talk about the big focus story at this hour. The OBC Kota Rao in Maharashtra has literally degenerated into an ugly spat. Misogyny has cre crept into this Kota debate. And that's what we are going to talk about today. Because the Maharashtra BJP president, Chandrakant Patil, has stirred a controversy with his comments against NCP Member of Parliament, Supriya Sule, telling her to go home and cook if she hasn't managed to get the OBC quota worked out before the local body elections. So clearly this has drawn sharp reactions from her party. Let's listen in to what Chandrakant Patil said and we will then uh, have our guests from the different parties respond to this particular comment. Let's listen in. ऐसा है कि हम महाविकास आगाडी के नेता नहीं है कि जो न्यायालय पर टिप्पणी करे हम ऐसे है कि जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन मानते हैं बाबा साहेब अंबेडकर जी को मानते हैं उस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अनुसार न्यायालय स्वायत्त रहता है उन्होंने क्या निर्णय देना ये मेरे जैसे व्यक्ति ने कहना बराबर नहीं उनको जो ठीक लगा उन्होंने निर्णय किया so just to give our viewers context, earlier on Wednesday, Supriya Sule was addressing a party meeting, raising questions on how the BJP-ruled Madhya Pradesh got relief from the Supreme Court over OBC reservation. She said the Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh went to Delhi and soon after, the entire thing worked out in favour of Madhya Pradesh. Now, Chandrakant Patil was referring to that. He was, in fact, protesting just a few meters away from the venue where Supriya Sule was talking. And he said, why are you in politics? Go home and cook. Now, this is the statement that has obviously drawn a lot of ire, a lot of outrage. Uh, the question that we want to ask is, are the Netas asserting that politics is a male bastion? Why are women and cooking being dragged into this quota debate? Do Netas consider politics an exclusive male preserve? Let's introduce our panelists this evening. Shaina NC, national spokesperson of the BJP. Mahesh Tapase, chief spokesperson of the NCP. And Swati Malik, spokesperson of the Congress. Very good evening to all of you. Thanks for joining us uh, here on the program. Shaina NC, let me begin with you. So go home and cook. That is condescending, disrespectful. But what is worse, it smacks of toxic patriarchy, isn't it? I mean, is the, is the leader here trying to say that go back to where you belong? And aren't you as a woman leader extremely offended by what the BJP chief in Maharashtra has publicly stated? So what Chandakan Dada said, with what reference to context, you can only ask him and he's best to answer what the reference was. As a woman in public life and public space, I will always take up for counter women, irrespective of what their ideologies, what their thought processes, which political parties they belong to, because I believe we must encourage women in public space. And who's to say that a woman cannot be competent in politics, in public life and in her personal space? Who's to decide that we cannot handle our homes and politics? And who's to have stereotypes suggesting that we should stay home? I think gone are the days when Indian women are going to stay silent and subjugated. Yes, politics is a male-dominated space. We must concede to that. And we must understand that leaders all across the board, and the list is so endless. If I start with right from a Mulayam Singh Yadav who said that, you know, ladke to ladke hai, unse galtiyan hoti rehti hai. Somebody else saying that if rape is inevitable, enjoy it. Somebody else typecasting a woman and saying, unko ghar pe bhehrehna chahiye, rasoi ka kaam karna chahiye. Somebody else saying that, you know, what is your credential? I think these days need to change. Yes, we all need to speak up collectively. What the reference to context is, you should only ask the person concerned. But as far as a woman and a vocal woman in the public space, I only feel gone are the days of typecasting and uh, subjugating us. Yes, there is this tendency to infantilize uh, women, isn't it, uh, Swati Malik? Do you agree that there's this tendency in politics and it's not just about one party or the other across board? Like uh, Shaina and she said, we have heard these comments. 
Afrida, unfortunately, what you said is absolutely true. And I think this is one of the few rare moments that China and I will agree on the fact that, you know, women, we don't need to be told uh, what to do and what not to do, right? And if you recall in 2015, when uh, Smithi Rani had an episode with Fab India, the whole controversy, how yes. women across all parties got together, right? And we supported, everybody came up and supported Smriti Raniji that moment. So I agree with Shaina that yes, we all have to, then this is not about one party, but what also matters here, the little bit about the party that matters here is that it has to come from senior leadership to condemn such comments. So when senior leadership does not condemn such comments, somewhere, you know, such mis misogynist men, they get encouraged to keep on repeating it, whether it's about ripped jeans, whether it is about like, you know, uh, Shine already repeated a couple of them. So whether it is, whatever those comments are, they have to be condemned by senior leadership. And that is where the responsibility of senior leaders of the political parties, various political parties uh, will come in. Like you noted, you would have noticed in January, I think, unfortunately a comment was made by the Karnataka Congress chief and it was condemned by all the senior leaders of the Congress party. And the gentleman had to apologize on the same platform where he made that comment, right? So that is the kind of responsibility that we can attach to parties here. But yes, we women across all parties have to look out for each other, have to support each other, and have to provide that security for each other. That it, it doesn't matter which political party says what, but nobody should be able to get away with it. That's what I'd like to say. Mahesh Tabase, I would like you to come in on this. And, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is uh, Mr. Patel has now given a clarification, saying that I didn't mean it that way, and there was a message, uh, a, a sort of an advice to uh, Supriya Sule to understand rural politics, that is the kind of clarification he has come up with. Are you convinced? First of all, it was never expected from a state president of a national party to have such a misogynistic, depraved, deranged statement which has made. I never expected Mr. Chandrakant Patil to make this kind of a statement. And now that he has made a statement, the way he is putting up things and trying to justify a statement is absolutely wrong. I agree with these two ladies, one my fellow panelists on the, this thing, that apart from our political ideologies, different political ideologies, we must stand for the cause of women. My party, my party leader, Sharad Kaur, was the first to introduce women reservation in the state of Maharashtra and giving them equal opportunity in the local self-government election. That's how women across various political parties are Najila Parishad presidents and mayors and whatnot. But this kind of a statement coming from a leader of that stature really, really disturbed us a lot. I think Supriya Suli took it very sportingly. She didn't give any comment. But across Maharashtra, women from various political parties, various social outreaches, they are angered on the statement that Mr. Patel is doing. Oh, yes. Now, yeah, Shaina and see, you know, uh, the fact of the matter is now uh, there is a clarification coming, but we do want to play out, and it was probably there uh, on the screen as well, on what uh, husband of Shaina and see, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, uh, Supriya Sule has said, and he says, I've always maintained that BJP are misogynistic and demean women whenever they can. I'm proud of my wife, who is a homemaker, mother, and a successful politician, one amongst many other hardworking and talented women in India. This is an insult to all women. Now, here is the question that, you know, that I put in the beginning of the show, that it seems as if there are leaders in the political class who think women have intruded into a male bastion. Is that the kind of sentiment that you operating uh, in the political sphere also sense and experience? So I think we shouldn't shame women because of their gender for starters, irrespective of who it is, which public uh, platform and what prompted him to say it, um, irrespective of what kind of uh, questions were raised, all of that is justifiable only after you speak to the leader concerned. But having said that, I don't think this is a competition between BJP, Congress, uh, Samajwadi party or any other party. This is about a male misogynistic mindset which exists in public life. And the earlier we face it and accept that this is a situation which we all need to collectively condemn. And uh, that when I say that, it is not just about Supriya Sule or XYZ, about all women in public space. 
I remember very clearly, you know, when I fought my first election in 2004, people dismissed me and said, Are ye to sari penati hai, isko rajniti ke baare mein kya pata? And look at us now in 2022, all of us have hung on, stood our own, fought collectively and stood out as women wanting to make a difference for the cause of women in public life and in public space. So I hope that men realize that this is a wake up call to respect a wake-up call to understand that women cannot be just shoved into kitchens and homes, but to be accepted as a competent leader based on our competency and not because some unjust injustice or because of being somebody's daughter or somebody's wife or daughter-in-law or whatever. It yes. is our own competence and our own talents that give us these opportunities and I think it's important for all of us to speak up about Indian politics and the male misogynistic mindset in Indian politics which our Prime Minister has always fought against and mm. his first speech I remember on Lal Killa where he said that you know why do we question our male children uh, uh, you know or our women uh, or girls in public space we must question men too and we must question all our sons and Bete ko padhao, bete ko sikhao is an abhiyan which we must all talk about because it's not just about beti bachao, beti padhao. It is about making men sensitive towards competent women irrespective of where she chooses to be, whether it's a taxi driver or whether it's a bus conductor or whether it is even that stereotypical notion to say, ladki to gaari nahi chala sakti hai. Kyun nahi chala sakti hai? Aaj to hum helicopter chala rahe hain, sab kuch chala rahe hain, desh chala te hain. So you give us that due and give us that respect it's something Context we demand, now, something I want to just uh, turn our focus, for uh, Shaina, if you allow me to turn our focus to the issue, why, what sparked off this entire statement. And Mahesh Sapase, I'll come to you on that. The fact of the matter is here is Mr. Patel accusing the MVA government of failing to get the OBC quota issue sorted for the state of Maharashtra. So in a way, he was speaking for that issue, where, of course, he diverted and, uh, you know, got caught on the wrong foot. But his allegation is that... The government in Maharashtra has failed to get things done, the empirical data done, the triple test uh, that is required by the Supreme Court. And therefore, he says, yeah, if I you don't you. know politics, yeah, you shouldn't be here. But then, of course, there was no need to bring in the, miso the misogynistic comment. Your view on how you would react to that charge, that you have failed to get the OBC quota for the state? I think Mr. Patil and his party needs to get the facts right. I can give you three examples in which the empiric, on, the, on the issue of empirical data, the government has made three statements. The first statement says that we have the empirical data, which is 98.87% accurate. It is made on the floor of the House or in front of the, to the parliament, uh, parliamentary committee. The second statement which has come that we cannot give the empirical data, this has been made to the Supreme Court. The second statement is that we cannot give the empirical Shall data. Shall I make because it all the other comments made by other leaders? No, 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 no let me finish quickly. Let, me, let me finish, please. That it, it, it cannot be given because it has got some flaws. There are some errors. No, the you're third, missing the point, Mr. Tapase. This is not a competition between man versus woman or party versus party. Allow me to speak, A male please. misogynistic mindset. No, no, we are keeping that comment aside for a moment. We are, no, moment. We are just trying to move on. The views we'll on the issue that speak. sparked this comment. Let Mr. Tapase. Yeah, you, you have to allow me to speak my, make my comment. The second issue was we have the data. This is the central government saying. In, into the Supreme Court that we have the data but it is full of errors. Hence, we cannot give it to the state. Mm -hmm. The third statement has been made by Minister Virendra Singh who is Minister for Social Justice and Rehabilitation. In a return reply to Supriya Sengal Sule, he has said that we don't have any data on OBC, on any empirical data on OBC uh, census. So these are three different statements made by the same government which has come into power from 2014 onwards. And hence, when we were, even, even when uh, Devendra Patnavi ji was the CM of Maharashtra, he realized that something is going to happen. And hence, when he asked the central government about the data, it could not be given to him because I don't know what mindset this uh, central government has. There are two clear were, positions on this. I'll take quick last word from Swati Malik. I know the BJP's position, as has been repeated a number of you times. You have to allow me and to And Mahesh up is yeah. also now giving us the other side. Why? That argument does not hold water. Quick last word to uh, Swati Malik. Uh, why do you think that this quota row issue has got stuck in the ranks? There's no progress as of now. 
see why there's no progress is uh, there's no uh, clarification as yet which has been provided so whether whatever the reasons may be given but like you said let's this debate is about the whole misogynist comment right so let's just focus on that and let's just you know we have to as women together we all have to stand up together against any sort of comments being made and let's just convey to all the misogynist all the men in an indian politics who think it's not a place for women and okay. you know sometimes feel they make these comments to sound funny or to make it like and they can just get away with this one smart line one liner here or there whether it is about like i said whether it's about those uh, ripped jeans or it's about last time they said chikne chehre le aaye hain election you know all those small short comments one liners which i think is funny and it will appeal to the youth so i think somewhere we all have to put our foot down and uh, against those comments and tell them it's not funny yes it's, it's just... not done it's not acceptable as uh, working women as working mothers we are juggling a lot of roles and the last thing we want to hear is that you belong to the kitchen we may not be a success every single day but we do try very hard thank you so much swati malik and shaina nc as well as mahesh tapase for joining us this evening